Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host. Welcome to the Ultimate Retro Gaming Odyssey, where we rewind time and dig deeper into the pixelated universe of the Sega Genesis. In this special episode, we'll be exploring top 25 graphically superior Sega Genesis games. But we're not just revisiting games, we're reliving legends. From the enchanting realms of Disney's Aladdin to the intense battles of Contra Hardcore, each game is a unique gem, a piece of history, if we must add. We'll soar with Sonic, brawl in Streets of Rage, and go on interstellar adventures with Rista. Whether you're a die-hard fan or a curious newcomer, prepare to be fascinated by tales of heroism, adventure, and the pure joy of gaming. So, grab your controllers and join us on this pixel-powered journey through the best that the Sega Genesis has to offer. Disney's Aladdin, 1993. Number 1. Disney's Aladdin, 1993. The game mirrors the enchanting story of the 1992 film Aladdin. You're Aladdin, the charming street smart hero navigating through Agrabah's bustling streets and beyond. Your mission? Outwit the evil sorcerer Jafar, win Princess Jasmine's heart, and snag that magical lamp with the help of your quick wits and your trusty sidekick Abu. Gameplay here is classic side scroller, but with a twist. You're not just running and jumping, you're also slicing through enemies with your scimitar and lobbing apples like there's no tomorrow. The game plays smooth, with a mix of action and puzzle solving that keeps you on your toes. Collecting gems, dodging hazards and grabbing those genie tokens adds layer of fun and strategy. And let's not forget the bonus rounds, <laughs> your nostalgic gold. Graphically, this game is a visual feast. Why? Because Disney animators themselves worked on it. The characters look like they leap straight out of the movie, with fluid animations that were groundbreaking for its time. The vibrant colours and detailed backgrounds make each level a piece of art. It's like playing through the movie, and for a 90s game, that's serious impressive. All in all, a magic carpet ride of nostalgia, stunning visuals and timeless gameplay that still holds up today. Comic Zone 1995. Imagine being sucked into your own comic book. That's the wild ride for Sketch Turner, a New York artist and musician. He's working on Comic Zone, a comic about Earth's battle against alien invaders. Then BAM! A lightning strike, and the comic's villain Mortis springs to life and traps Sketch inside his own creation. Sketch has to battle through his comic world, teaming up with General Alyssa Cyan to stop Mortis and save both the comic and real worlds. It's a race against time, with a twist. The ending changes based on how you play. Gameplay-wise, Comic Zone is a beat-em-up with some extra added twist. You're literally jumping from panel to panel in a comic book. Sketch can punch, kick, and use cool items like bombs and knives. Plus, he's got his pet rat, Roadkill, to sniff out secrets. The game is full of puzzles and branching paths, making each playthrough unique. Watch out, though. <laughs> Sketch's health drops not just from enemy attacks, but also from using certain moves and breaking through obstacles. Graphically, this game is a visual masterpiece because it's like playing inside an actual comic book. The bright colors, dynamic drawing style, and dialogue bubbles make it feel like you're part of a superhero story. It's so authentic that Sega even patented the concept. The attention to detail in the sprites and backgrounds is just top-notch. Ranger X, 1993. In Ranger X, you're the hero in a powered exoskeleton fighting to save your home planet from the invading Rahuna forces. It's a high-stakes battle where you're the last line of defense, piloting this high-tech suit equipped with a jetpack and an arsenal of weapons. Your mission is to last through enemy lines, take down bosses, and push back the Rahuna to save the day. Now, coming to the gameplay, this game is all about action and strategy. You've got a jetpack for short flights, but watch that temperature gauge. <laughs> it overheats. Your main weapon is a pulse rifle, but the real fun comes with the special weapons like flamethrowers and homing attacks. These drain power, which you can only recharge in bright light. Plus, there's this cool feature where you can control a support vehicle, like the Indra. Think Robocop meets a futuristic Harley. The game's levels are diverse, each introduced with a wireframe 3D cutscene setting up your objectives. Alright, now let's talk about the graphical strength. Ranger X stands out for its graphics, which were ahead of its time. The team at GAU Entertainment focused on creating a polished game, and it shows. The visuals have a distinct shine, with intricate animations for the sprites that bring the robots in the world to life. They push the Sega Genesis to its limits, using hardware tricks to enhance the color palette, making the game not just fun to play, but a feast for the eyes.
Streets of Rage series. Next up is Streets of Rage, that offers pure street smart action. In this game, you're part of a trio of former cops, Adam, Axel or Blaze, who have had enough of the corruption and crime in Wood Oak City. The city is under the iron grip of the nefarious Mr. X and his crime syndicate, and it's up to you to clean up the streets. It's a classic tale of good versus evil, where you're dishing out justice one punch at a time. This game is all about brawling through the city's eight gritty levels, each packed with a variety of thugs, from ninjas to punks. You've got a whole arsenal of moves, 40 in total, including including headbutts, backslams and reverse kicks. And let's not forget the weapons scattered around, like pipes and baseball bats, to give your fists a break. Plus, there's the iconic special attack, where you call in a police car to launch explosives at your enemies. It's a satisfying mix of strategy and action, especially when you team up with a friend for some two-player cooperative play. Graphics-wise, Streets of Rage stands out for its detailed atmospheric graphics that perfectly capture the gritty urban setting. The character sprites are large and well-animated, making each punch and kick feel impactful. The backgrounds are varied and full of life, from illuminated streets to grimy back alleys, immersing you in a city that's both dangerous and alive. The game's visual style set a standard for beat-em-ups in the early 90s. Contra Hardcore 1994 Set in 2641, five years after Contra 3 The Alien Wars, the game throws you into a world where a renegade Colonel Bahamut has stolen an alien cell to create devastating weapons. Enter the Hardcore, an elite team of commandos tasked with stopping Bahamut's sinister plans. The team includes the tough-as-nails Raid Howard and fierce Sheena Atranzi, the wolf-like humanoid Brad Fang and the nimble robot Brownie. It's a race against time to thwart the terrorist group and save the day. Speaking of gameplay, this one's a thrill ride from start to finish. You blast through stages, taking down every enemy in your path and facing off against massive bosses. The game mixes things up with stages where you ride a motoroid, adding variety to the classic side view action. Each character has unique weapons and abilities, adding depth to the gameplay. Plus, there's a cool feature where the story changes based on key decisions, leading to multiple endings. It's a game that's as much about firepower as it is about choices. Coming to graphical strength now, this game is a visual powerhouse. The sprites are detailed and full of character, especially the diverse range of enemies and massive bosses. The backgrounds are rich and varied, immersing you in a world that's both futuristic and gritty. The action's smooth and fast-paced, making every jump, slide and shot look and feel impactful. Overall, this one's a non-stop action fest, with its branching storylines and explosive graphics that'll make every playthrough an adrenaline-pumping adventure. Alien Soldier 1995 Alien Soldier said in the year 2015, you're in a world where A-humans have created super-intelligent and strong beings. The story centers around Epsilon Eagle, the leader of a terrorist group called Scarlet, who's nearly killed in an assassination attempt. This event throws him into the space-time continuum, and when he returns, he's on a mission for vengeance and to save his planet. The plot thickens with internal conflicts, a power struggle within Scarlet, and Epsilon's transformation into a dual personality, chasing after the new leader, Xi Tiger. Gameplay-wise, this game is all about intense boss battles. You play as Epsilon Eagle, blasting through 25 stages filled with 26 bosses. The stages are short, giving you a breather between the epic boss fights. You've got a variety of weapons to choose from, each with its own ammo system. Epsilon can run, double jump, hover and even dash across the screen. When at full health, this dash turns into the Phoenix Force, a powerful attack. There's also a cool counter move that can turn enemy bullets into health. The game offers two difficulties, super easy and super hard, catering to different skill levels. Graphically, the sprites are large and detailed, especially the bosses, which are some of the most visually impressive on the system. The backgrounds are vibrant and varied, adding depth to each stage. The game's animation is fluid, making the action feel fast and intense. To sum it up, a run-and-gun masterpiece, with its intense boss battles and stunning graphics making it a must-play for any retro gaming aficionado. Gunstar Heroes 1993 In Gunstar Heroes, you become a part of the dynamic duo Gunstar Red and Gunstar Blue, who are set on a mission to thwart an evil empire's plans to snatch out four powerful gems. These gems hold immense power, and it's up to the Gunstars to keep them out of the wrong hands. It's a classic tale of good versus evil, packed with energy and a unique sense of humour that sets the stage for an unforgettable adventure. Now, coming to the gameplay, this game is all about non-stop action. You can play solo or team up with a friend for some cooperative chaos. There are seven stages, and you get to choose the order for the 
first four. Each stage offers something different, from classic side-scrolling shootouts to unique challenges like minecart rides and helicopter battles. You start with a choice of firing stance and weapon, and there are four different shot types – homing shot, lightning blaster, flamethrower, and machine gun. The cool part? Yeah, you can combine these weapons to create new, more powerful shot types. On top of the shooting, there are a bunch of acrobatic moves you can pull off, adding depth and excitement to the gameplay. Graphics-wise, it's so visually attractive, especially for a 16-bit game. The sprites are colourful and detailed, bursting with personality. The backgrounds are vibrant and varied, immersing you in each stage's unique environment. The game's animation is smooth and fluid, making every jump, slide and shot feel dynamic. It's truly a graphical showcase that really pushed the Genesis to its limits, thanks to the system's powerful Motorola 68000 microprocessor. Panorama Cotton 1994, the third installment of the Cotton series. The story of Panorama Cotton picks up with the magical candies known as Willows. After the events of the first game, where the witch Cotton and Fairy Silk restored light to the world by defeating the demoness Wool, a new adventure unfolds. This time, Queen Velvet starts acting strangely, spouting nonsensical things. Silk and her sister Knit discover that a burnt willow is causing the Queen's odd behaviour. As Silk tries to dispose of it, Cotton snatches it away, eats it, and is immediately disgusted, learning that someone is burning willow. Cotton vows to put a stop to it, kicking off another quirky and colourful journey with Silk. Coming to the gameplay, which is a pseudo 3D rail shooter, much like Sega's Space Harrier, but set in an anime style fantasy world. The game has you flying into the screen, moving Cotton around to dodge obstacles and blast away at a variety of enemies. As you progress, you can upgrade Cotton's weapon and cast magical spells by collecting special items. The game's levels scroll in various directions, adding to the dynamic and immersive experience. Speaking of graphical strength, the game stands out for its impressive pseudo 3D graphics especially considering the limitations of the Mega Drive. The colourful, anime-inspired art style brings the fantasy world to life, with vibrant visuals and imaginative designs. The way the game transitions between different scrolling directions showcases a technical prowess that was quite advanced for its time, making this one a graphical standout on the system. Castlevania Bloodlines 1994. The game unfolds in 1917 against the backdrop of World War I, a dark time filled with violence and massacre. Elizabeth Bartley, a vampire, orchestrates the war as a sacrificial ritual to resurrect her uncle Dracula. Enter our heroes John Morris, a descendant of the Belmont and Morris families, and Eric Lacard, whose girlfriend was turned into a vampire. They embark on a grim journey across Europe, following Elizabeth and her witch accomplice Dralta Zwentes to thwart their plans and ultimately confront Dracula himself. It's known for its fast and action-packed gameplay. Players can choose between John Morris with his whip-swinging skills and Eric Lacard, who uses his spear for high jumps. The game features classic Castlevania elements like sub-boss and main-boss battles, weapon upgrades, and special items like the axe, boomerang, and holy water. The stages are diverse, with some offering different paths depending on the chosen character, adding a layer of replayability and strategy. Despite the limitations of the Genesis color palette and cart size, this game stands out for its atmospheric and intricately animated graphics. The game's gothic aesthetic is beautifully rendered, with detailed character sprites and immersive dark environments that perfectly capture the series' mood. The animation is fluid and dynamic, making every whip crack and spear thrust feel impactful. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 1992. In this thrilling sequel, Sonic the Hedgehog is back to stop the nefarious Dr. Robotnik from stealing the Chaos Emeralds to power his space station, the Death Egg. This time, Sonic is joined by his new sidekick, Miles Tails Brower, as they race through various levels to thwart Robotnik's evil plans. It's a fast-paced adventure that takes Sonic and Tails across diverse and challenging landscapes, all in the name of saving their world from chaos. Gameplay-wise, this one is known for its faster gameplay and larger levels compared to its predecessor. Players control Control Sonic with Tails following along through side-scrolling levels at breakneck speeds. The game introduces the Spin Dash move, allowing Sonic to curl into a ball and charge up a speed boost. Players navigate through levels filled with enemies, obstacles, and collect rings for health. The game also features a multiplayer mode in special stages with pre-rendered 3D graphics where players can collect Chaos Emeralds. The addition of Tails as a playable character and the option to play as Sonic or Tails individually adds a new dimension to the gameplay. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is graphically impressive, especially for its time. The game's color 
colours are so vibrant and detailed. And the animations are also really smooth, so you get to witness the true capabilities of the Sega Genesis. The special stages in particular, with their 3D graphics, were a significant step up from the norm and added an extra layer of visual flair to the game. The character designs of Sonic and Tails are iconic and have become synonymous with the series. To sum it up, this one's a turbocharged sequel that ups the ante with faster gameplay, larger worlds, and graphics that showcases Sega Genesis' masterwork. Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse, 1990. Coming up next is this charming tale where Mickey Mouse goes on a heroic quest to rescue Minnie Mouse from the clutches of the evil witch Miserabelle. To defeat Miserabelle and save Minnie, Mickey must venture into the Castle of Illusion and collect the seven gems of the rainbow, guarded by Miserabelle's Masters of Illusion and her bizarre army of enchanted creatures. The journey takes Mickey through various illusion-filled worlds, each presenting its own unique challenges and enemies. As Mickey, players navigate side-scrolling levels, using a bounce attack to defeat enemies and reach high areas. Mickey can also collect and throw projectiles like apples and marbles. The game is filled with items that grant bonus points, boost health, and provide extra lives. Each level culminates in a boss battle against a master of illusion, where Mickey can earn one of the coveted gems. The final showdown is against a giant, youthful version of Miserabelle herself. For those looking for a lighter challenge, there's an easy mode that offers a shortened version of the first three levels. This game simply is visually captivating, especially for a game from the early 90s. The graphics are bright and colourful, capturing the enchanting Disney aesthetic perfectly. The character animations are also smooth and expressive, bringing Mickey and the various creatures he encounters to life. The imaginative level designs, from the enchanted forest to Toyland, are really a treat for the eyes, making each stage a delightful new experience. Dynamite Heady 1994 Dynamite Heady, a 1994 Sega Genesis platformer developed by Treasure, is a wildly inventive game that stands out in the crowded platform genre with its unique protagonist and creative gameplay. The game stars Heady, a charismatic puppet, in his quest to save his world from the clutches of the evil puppet king Dark Demon. Dark Demon is transforming the world's puppets into his evil minions. It's up to Heady to battle through the king's army, including foes like Trouble Bruin and various key masters to restore peace and order. Speaking gameplay-wise, now, this game is all about versatility and creativity. Heady can throw his detachable head in any direction to attack enemies or use it to grapple onto hooks and swing to new areas. The game really shines with its 17 different head power-ups, each offering unique abilities like spinning fireballs, invincibility, speed boosts and health restoration. Some power-ups are temporary, adding a strategic element to their use. The game also features bonus stages, extra lives and health restoratives. Uniquely, falling into bottomless pits doesn't result in instant death. Instead, Heady bounces back, giving players a second chance, albeit with some damage. It is of no doubt how strong the graphics are in this game. It smoothly showcases Treasure's technical prowess. The game is also filled with vibrant colours that are super attractive to players and imaginative level designs are impressive too. The animations are smooth and expressive that brings life to the game, especially the various transformations of Heady's head, which are both humorous and visually engaging. Overall, with its quirky hero, inventive gameplay and eye-catching graphics, this one is a standout title on the Genesis. Toe Jam and Earl 1 and 2 Toe Jam and Earl is a quirky action game developed by Johnson Vorsanger Productions and published by Sega in 1991. The story revolves around two alien rappers, Toe Jam and Earl, who crash land on Earth. Players embark on a funky adventure to collect pieces of the wrecked spacecraft to escape the planet. Set against a backdrop of 1980s and early 90s urban culture, the game is a humorous take on earthly life, complete with a funk soundtrack. Let's talk about the gameplay now. The game unfolds from a three-quarter perspective in a 2D world, drawing inspiration from from the roguelike games. Players navigate floating islands, representing Earth, in either single-player or two-player cooperative modes. The game plays a mix of avoiding antagonistic Earthlings and searching for spacecraft debris. Power-ups, hidden in wrapped presents, add an element of surprise and strategy, with some aiding the player and others posing risks. Graphics-wise, the game stands out for its graphically impressive, colourful and whimsical design. The floating islands and diverse Earthlings are rendered in a style that vividly captures the essence of 1990s urban culture. Thank you. 
Red Zone, 1994. Red Zone is another 1994 shoot 'em up game for the Sega Genesis, which was developed by Xyrinx and published by Time Warner Interactive. It's a game that uniquely combines helicopter piloting and on foot missions, all presented in a top down view. The game is set against a backdrop of political turmoil and military aggression. A military force has taken over the small fictional country of Zistrian, leading to mass deportations and torture. In response to this annexation, Zistrian invades a neighboring country. Amidst this chaos, a dictator emerges, threatening the world with nuclear missiles, targeting one country after another. The player's mission is to navigate these dangerous territories and thwart the dictator's nuclear ambitions. It offers a dual gameplay experience. Players switch between piloting a helicopter and engaging in on-foot combat. The helicopter sections involve flying missions, battling enemy forces, and navigating through challenging environments. On foot, players engage in ground combat, infiltrating enemy bases and completing objectives. This switch in gameplay styles has a unique depth and variety to the game. Graphically, the game stands out for its advanced use of technology, especially for the Genesis era. It features full-screen rotation, 3D vectors, real-time zoom, and even full-motion video, all impressive feats on the Genesis Mega Drive hardware. These technical achievements result in a visually dynamic game, with smooth animations and a level of graphical detail that was rare for its time. Vector Man and Vector Man 2 Vector Man is set in a future where Earth is devastated by pollution and humanity has left their planet, entrusting its cleanup to robots called Orbots. The game's antagonist, Warhead, a supervisory robot, becomes corrupted and plans to wage war against humanity. Vector Man, an Orbot unaffected by Warhead's control, returns from space to stop him and save Earth. Gameplay-wise, it's a 2D action platformer where players control Vector Man through 16 levels. The gameplay involves running, jumping and shooting, with Vector Man able to shoot in 8 directions. He can transform into different forms with unique abilities using power-ups, adding variety to the gameplay. The game emphasizes item collection and features a health bar system. The game is known for its advanced graphics on the Sega Genesis, utilizing technologies like full-screen rotation, 3D vectors, and real-time zoom. These features contribute to a visually dynamic experience with detailed animations and environments. Now let's explore its sequel, Vector Man 2. Following the events of the first game, Vector Man's spaceship is destroyed by a missile. He lands near an old research facility on Earth, only to find it overrun by mutant insects. Vector Man sets out to eliminate this new threat, ultimately facing the evil Black Widow Queen. Similar to his predecessor, Vector Man 2 is also a 2D action platformer with running, jumping, and shooting mechanics. The sequel features 22 levels, with shorter and more compact stages compared to the first game. Vector Man can again transform into different forms by defeating specific enemies, each form granting unique abilities. The health system and power-up mechanics remain similar to the first game. Vector Man 2 continues the graphical prowess of the original, with detailed sprite animations and diverse environments. While it retains the technological advancements of the first game, it also introduces new visual elements that enhance the overall experience. Both the games of the Vectorman series are celebrated for their out-of-the-world graphics and super-attractive gameplay that's bound to keep you hooked. So, you get why they make such standout titles on the Sega Genesis. Thunder Force 4, 1992 Thunder Force 4, also known as Lightning Force, Quest for the Dark Star in North America, is a 1992 shoot 'em up game developed by Technosoft for the Sega Mega Drive. It's the fourth installment in the Thunder Force series and a standout title in the shoot 'em up genre. Set two years after Thunder Force 3, the game's story follows a fighter pilot battling the Orn Empire, which threatens human extinction. The player's mission is to navigate through various stages, combating the Empire's forces and ultimately halting their sinister plans. Now coming to the kick-ass game Play. This one adds a twist with extensive vertical scrolling, allowing players to explore a larger playing field. Players can select the first four stages in any order, the total of ten stages to conquer. The game features automatic horizontal scrolling, with the option for players to scroll vertically to uncover hidden power-ups and enemy waves. Each stage culminates in a boss fight, with additional mid-stage bosses. The player's ship can be equipped with various weapons, including missiles and lasers, each with unique firing patterns and suited for different combat scenarios. Players can cycle through multiple weapons and gain additional power-ups like shields and satellite ships, enhancing their firepower. A notable feature is the Thunder Sword Attack, a powerful weapon unlocked mid-game. The visual quality of this game is truly breathtaking, arguably ranking it among the top in the Mega Drive collection. The game features rich, dynamic backgrounds ranging from cosmic vistas to oceans and volcanic flows, enhanced by impressive parallax scrolling. The ship's design is perfectly sized and stylish, complemented by a diverse array of enemies and some exceptionally large and creatively designed bosses. The gameplay remains fluid and swift, with minimal slowdowns during intense on screen action.
Reistar, 1995. Reistar is a 1995 platform game developed and published by Sega for the Sega Genesis. It features an anthropomorphic star character with unique abilities, set in a vibrant and imaginative universe. The story of this game varies slightly between the Japanese and international versions. In both, the game is set in a distant galaxy under threat from the evil space pirate Kaiser Greedy, whose mind controlled the leaders of various planets. In the Japanese version, Reistar is awakened by the mother of shooting stars, Aruto, to answer the prayers of the oppressed inhabitants and defeat Greedy. In the international version, Rystar's father, a legendary hero, is kidnapped by Greedy, prompting Rystar to embark on a rescue mission. The game concludes with Rystar thwarting Greedy's plans, with the endings differing slightly based on the version. Coming to the gameplay now, this 2D side-scrolling platformer game focuses on the use of Rystar's stretchable arms, which can reach in eight directions. These arms are used for attacking enemies, opening treasure chests and interacting with the environment. Rystar can swing from poles, grab onto enemies and objects mid-air, and use star handles to launch himself through levels. The game features a health system based on star icons and includes bonus stages for additional challenges. Each level ends with a special star handle that launches Rystar to the end of the level and the player's performance is rewarded with bonus points. It's graphically strong due to its colourful and detailed sprites, as well as the imaginative and diverse level designs. The game's animation is fluid and expressive, particularly in the way Rystar moves and interacts with his environment. The creative use of Rystar's stretchable arms and the dynamic actions they enable add to the visual appeal of the game. Rystar remains a memorable title for its distinctive character and gameplay mechanics, as well as its vibrant graphics, despite being released during the twilight years of the Sega Genesis. Sonic and Knuckles, 1994. The game's story picks up after the events of Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Dr. Robotnik's orbital weapon, the Death Egg, has crash-landed on Angel Island. Sonic sets out to retrieve the Chaos Emeralds to stop Robotnik, while Knuckles, misled about Sonic's intentions, initially opposes him. The plot unfolds with Sonic discovering Robotnik's plan to steal the Master Emerald and Knuckles realizing Robotnik's deceit. In Knuckles' storyline, he battles Egg Robo and Mecha Sonic, ultimately saving Angel Island. Speaking gameplay-wise, players can choose to play as Sonic or Knuckles, each with unique abilities. Sonic can jump higher and access shield abilities, while Knuckles can glide and climb walls. The game features six levels divided into two acts, with mini-boss and boss fights. Players collect rings, avoid obstacles and defeat enemies. The game introduces the lock-on technology, allowing it to be combined with Sonic the Hedgehog 3 for an extended experience, and with Sonic the Hedgehog 2 to play as Knuckles in that game. This one's quite graphically impressive for the Sega Genesis, with detailed and flashy environments, fluid animations and creative level designs. The use of parallax Scrolling and diverse backgrounds adds depth to the visuals, making it one of the more graphically advanced games on this system. Virtua Racing, 1992. All right, here we have Virtua Racing, which was released in 1992 by Sega, a super engaging 3D polygonal arcade racer that set new standards in the genre with its advanced technology and gameplay. While this one doesn't have a traditional storyline, it immerses players in the world of Formula One racing. The game offers a choice of one F1 car with two selectable gearboxes and three racetracks, each with unique features and challenges. The arcade version's tracks include Big Forest, Beginner, Bay Bridge, Intermediate, and Acropolis. Expert, each offering a distinct racing experience. The gameplay of it is a significant leap from traditional races of the time. Players navigate their F1 car through various tracks, competing against time and other races. The game is known for its VR view system, allowing players to switch between four different camera views. This feature was later adopted in many other Sega arcade races. The game also includes special features like amusement parks in Big Forest or the actual Bay Bridge, enhancing the racing experience. Coming to graphical strength, it was a graphical powerhouse for its time, utilizing Sega's new Model 1 3D graphics platform. It featured full-screen rotation, 3D vectors, and real-time zoom, which were groundbreaking for arcade games in the early 90s. The game's use of 3D polygon graphics was influential, setting the stage for future 3D racers and contributing to the popularization of 3D graphics in video games. Virtua Racer not only marked a significant technological advancement in arcade gaming, but also provided a thrilling and immersive racing experience that resonated with players and critics alike. Flashback, The Quest for Identity, 1992 Flashback, also known as Flashback, The Quest for Identity in the United States, is a 1992 science fiction cinematic platform game developed by Delphine Software and published by various companies across different regions. Now, let's dive into the plot, shall we? Set in the year 2142, Flashback follows the story of intelligence agent Conrad B. Hart, who discovers the existence of shape-shifting aliens known as morphs infiltrating human society. After recording a message for himself, Conrad is captured by the morphs, who he 
raise his memory. He manages to escape, but crash lands in a jungle, beginning his quest to recover his memory and thwart the alien threat. The game's narrative unfolds as Conrad navigates through various challenges, eventually leading to a confrontation with the morphs on their home planet. Gameplay-wise, it's a cinematic platformer, similar in style to Prince of Persia and Delphine's own Another World. It involves navigating Conrad through diverse environments, solving puzzles and engaging in combat. Conrad's movements are realistic, with human-like running and jumping capabilities. He carries a pistol with unlimited ammo, a force shield as his health indicator, and a portable force field for defense. The game is known for its spatial puzzles and the use of a teleportation device in later levels, adding depth to the gameplay. The game stands out for its rotoscoped animation, giving Conrad's movements a fluid and realistic quality. This animation technique, combined with fully hand-drawn backdrops, results in a visually striking game. The detailed environments and character animations contribute to the game's cinematic feel, making it graphically superior for its time. Flink 1994 Flink, also known as The Misadventures of Flink, is a 2D scrolling platform game developed by former members of Thalion and published by Cygnosis. It's a visually rich and engaging title that showcases the capabilities of CD-ROM media in gaming. The game doesn't heavily focus on a detailed storyline. Instead, it centers around the character Flink, a whimsical and adventurous protagonist. The game's charm lies in its vibrant world and the imaginative adventures of its main character, rather than an intricate plot. Gameplay-wise, this classic 2D side-scrolling platformer simply slays. Players navigate Flink through various levels filled with obstacles, enemies and puzzles. The game stands out for its large levels and the inclusion of detailed graphics. The gameplay is smooth and intuitive, with a focus on exploration and item collection. The Amiga CD32 and Mega CD versions, in particular, benefit from the CD-ROM format, allowing for more expansive and detailed levels compared to traditional cartridge-based games. One of the most notable aspects of the game is its highly detailed graphics. The game showcases a level of visual detail and artistry that was quite advanced for its time especially in the CD-ROM versions. The use of CD-ROM media allowed the developers to include rich, vibrant environments and detailed character animations, making the game a visual treat. The artistic direction, combined with the technological capabilities of the CD-ROM format, results in a game that is both aesthetically pleasing and graphically impressive. Beyond Oasis 1994 The story of Thor, known in North America as Beyond Oasis, is a 1994 action-adventure game developed by Ancient and published by Sega for the Sega Genesis, featuring a blend of rich storytelling and engaging gameplay. The game follows the adventures of Prince Ali, who discovers a mystical gold amulet that once belonged to a benevolent wizard. This armlet is the counterpart to a malevolent silver armlet, used for creating chaos. The gold armlet grants Ali the power to summon four spirits, Ditto, the water spirit, Afri, the fire spirit, Shade, the shadow spirit, and Bo, the plant spirit. Ali embarks on a journey across the land of Oasis to thwart the evil wielder of the silver armlet, using the powers of the gold armlet and the spirits to restore peace. Gameplay-wise, this game incorporates action-adventure elements reminiscent of the Legend of Zelda series. Players control Prince Ali, navigating him through various landscapes to complete his quest. The game involves combat, exploration and puzzle solving. Ali's primary weapon is his knife, which can perform special attacks and has unlimited use. Throughout the game, players can equip Ali with additional weapons like swords, crossbows and bombs, each with unique abilities and limited durability. The game's distinctive feature is the ability to summon and control the four spirits, each offering unique abilities to aid in combat and puzzle solving. The game's visual presentation is so impressive that it's as if Sega discovered a hidden switch to enhance graphics which had been overlooked for years. The game's aesthetic quality isn't just a superficial aspect, it significantly enhances the gaming experience. While gameplay is often considered the core of a game's appeal, elements like a compelling story, immersive music and exceptional graphics play crucial roles in creating a holistic experience. Graphics, in particular, set the game's atmosphere and aid in visualizing the game's concepts, making them more than just eye candy for casual gamers. They're an integral part of the gaming experience, contributing to the overall enjoyment and engagement of the player. Sonic 3D Blast 1996 Sonic 3D Blast, which is also known as Sonic 3D, Flicky's Island in Europe and Japan, is a 1996 platform game in the iconic Sonic the Hedgehog series. Developed for the Sega Genesis and Sega Saturn, this game introduced a new twist to the classic Sonic formula with its unique perspective and gameplay mechanics. The game's story revolves around Sonic's mission to rescue the Flickies, a group of birds capable of travelling anywhere through large rings. Dr. Robotnik discovers these birds and, <laughs> seeing their potential, turns them into robots to aid in his quest for the Chaos Emeralds. Sonic arrives on Flicky's Island to find Robotnik wreaking havoc and quickly takes on the task of saving the Flickies and thwarting Robotnik's evil plans. Coming to the gameplay, this game stands out from previous entries in the series with its isometric perspective. Players control Sonic, who retains most of his classic abilities such as jumping, spinning and the spin dash. The primary objective in each level is to collect Flickies by defeating robots and then guide them to safety. The game is divided into several zones, each consisting of two standard levels focused on Flicky collection and a boss 
boss fight against Robotnik. Special stages, access by finding tails or knuckles with 50 rings, offer a chance to collect the Chaos Emeralds, crucial for unlocking the true ending and the final boss battle. The game's visual appeal lies in its unique 2D isometric perspective, which was a fresh take for a Sonic game. The pre-rendered 3D models converted into sprites for the Genesis version and the improved graphics on the Saturn version both contribute to a visually engaging experience. The detailed environments, character animations and special effects like ring collection and enemy defeats add to the game's visual charm. All in all, it's notable for its innovative approach to level design and graphics, providing a unique experience for Sonic fans and platformer enthusiasts alike. Disney's Toy Story 1995 Toy Story the video game is a side-scrolling platformer released in 1995 based on the beloved animated film of the same name. It was developed for various platforms including the Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, Game Boy and Microsoft Windows. The game captures the essence of the film's plot, allowing players to experience the story from a new interactive perspective. Let's take a peek at the plot, shall we? The game closely follows the storyline of the Toy Story film. It begins on Andy's birthday, with his toys anxiously anticipating the arrival of new toys. Woody, the sheriff doll, sends out green army men to scout. The arrival of Buzz Lightyear, a space ranger action figure, shakes up the toy community, especially affecting Woody, who feels threatened by Buzz's advanced features. Woody's jealousy leads to a series of events that see both him and Buzz navigating various challenges, both in Andy's house and beyond, as they eventually learn to work together and form a friendship. Now, coming to the gameplay, players control Woody through various stages that mirror key scenes from the film. Woody's primary tool is his pull string whip, used to tie up enemies or latch onto hooks for swinging across dangerous areas. The gameplay includes a mix of platforming challenges, enemy encounters, and unique levels like racing stages where players control RC, the remote-controlled car. The game also features a first-person perspective level inside the claw machine, adding variety to the gameplay. Speaking graphically, the game is notable for its faithful recreation of the film's vibrant and lively world. Character sprites and environments are well detailed, capturing the essence of the movie's iconic scenes. The animation of characters, especially Woody's movements with his pull-string whip, adds a dynamic feel to the gameplay. The different platforms the game was released on each offer their unique graphical strengths, with the Sega Genesis version standing out for its additional levels and detailed sprites. Overall, this game is a delightful adaptation of the film, offering varied gameplay and faithful graphics that bring the animated world to life in a fun and super interactive way. Marvelous verdict, and there you have it, fellow gamers, a kick-ass tour through the vibrant, pixel-packed universe of the Sega Genesis. From the adrenaline-pumping action of Vector Man to the whimsical charm of Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse, we've revisited the classics that defined a generation. These 25 titles didn't just push the boundaries of 16-bit graphics, they crafted worlds that captivated our imaginations and challenged our skills. As we conclude this journey, remember that each game we've explored is more than just a collection of pixels and soundtracks. They're timeless masterpieces that continue to inspire, awe and nostalgia. Whether you're revisiting these gems or experiencing the magic for the first time, the legacy of the Sega Genesis lives on. Keep gaming, cherish these classics and who knows, maybe you'll be inspired to dust off that old console and embark on a retro adventure of your own. Until next time, keep those controllers charged and your passion for gaming alive.